Hi everyone, so this is question 4 from your chapter 12 tutorial, heat conduction and thermal expansion. So you are given a diagram which consists of two rods being connected. One end is at 100 degrees Celsius, the other end will be 0 degrees Celsius. Uh, so the rod X has a length of 0 0.7 meter and the rod Y has a length of 0 0.3, 0 0.3 meter. Okay. So let's look at the question and slowly extract the information that we have. Okay. So it mentions here that you have two metal bars X and Y. Then these two metal bars are joined together and they have length of 70 cm and 30 cm respectively. So I believe you can extract it out and write it as L of X is equal to 0 0.70 meter. Let's just convert it to meter. Whereas length for y is 0 0.30 meter. The next thing we know that it's both of them are perfectly insulated. So if we see the word perfectly insulated, something must come to your mind. Okay, this is something a very key concept in chapter 12. If something is perfectly insulated, we have to know that there will be no heat loss to the system. Okay. So only when there's no heat loss, you will see the TX graph to be linear. Okay. For this kind of situation, the TX graph will be linear if it's perfectly insulated. So you see the TF graph to be something like this. TX. Then let's just call, call this uh, 1 meter, right? Let's say for this graph, uh, then this will be in degrees Celsius. If you follow this, then I'm not sure if which one will have a greater gradient than which one. So I just write, uh, just do it roughly. So probably uh, I'm just saying this, it might be something like this. The point that I'm trying to make is this line is straight. This line is straight because there's no heat loss. Why there's no heat loss? Before, because your rod is perfectly insulated. That's why your DT, your TX graph, you have straight line. If the line looks something like a curve, and that means there's heat loss somewhere. So it's not perfectly insulated. So important concept need to know. Okay, so let's continue. They have the same cross-sectional area. So same cross-section area, if you extract it, it will be AX, which will be equal to AY. Might be important, write it down. So at one end of X, heat is supplied from boiling water of 100 degrees Celsius. So the hot end is X and it has a, it is connected to a boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius. So one end of Y, which is the other end, is placed in melting ice of 0 degrees Celsius. So from here, uh, for me, I usually just call it TX and TY. Uh, one, some might call it TH and TC, the cold temperature and the hot temperature, TH and TC. So I will just call them um, TX and TY. Okay. X means by the end at X is equals to 100 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 373.15 Kelvin. Okay, please do the conversion by adding 273.15 to the degree Celsius value. Ty will be 0 degrees Celsius, so 0 plus 273.15, that will be our temperature in terms of Kelvin. So what's the next sentence? The temperature at the joint is 13 it is 15 cm joint is this area here okay the connector the connected part so we can say temperature at the joint so that will be tj let's just call it intuitively tj j means by joint that will be 15 degrees celsius and if you convert it to if you convert it to the uh, kelvin then it will be 288.15 
Okay, so last sentence, they asked what? They asked you to calculate the ratio of thermal conductivity of X to that of Y at steady state. Well, that last sentence is quite jam-packed actually. Two information to digest. First thing is, they asked for what? They asked for ratio of thermal conductivity of X to that of Y. Thermal conductivity is what you usually call it as K. So the thermal conductivity of X, you want to find a ratio with thermal conductivity of Y. They're asking for this. So we usually just express it as Kx over Ky equals to something. So that's what we are find, trying to find here. Okay. But the next important thing is they say it's at steady state. So what does it mean by steady state? So if we say something is in steady state, so in the steady state, you have to be, be, yeah, it means it's steady. So what kind of steady? When we say some, something is in steady state, it means by the temperature remains constant. You shouldn't say remain constant. Temperature won't change with time. Okay, the temperature won't change with time. So what does it mean is, let's say here it's, uh, let's just give examples to make things clearer. Let's say over here it's 80 degrees Celsius. So if something is in steady state, 5 seconds later, it will still be in 80 degrees Celsius. 2 years later, it will still be in 80 degrees Celsius. If it remains at steady state, steady won't change, it's stable. So the temperature does not change. So if the joint here is 15, then yeah, forever it will be 15 as long as it is in steady state. So this one, let's say 30, then this one will still be 30 when it is at steady state. So the temperature won't change with time. But as you can see, different positions have different temperature. So the temperature across the whole rod is different. You have that you have region which is hotter, you have region which is colder. But the thing I want to emphasize is the temperature won't change. So the hot remains hot, the cold remains cold, the cold won't get hotter, the cold won't get colder. The hot won't get colder, the hot won't get hotter. The temperature remains the same. Okay. The second thing is why does the temperature won't change with time? It's because the QDT, also known as rate of heat flow, is constant all along the rod. Okay, so the QDT is constant all along the rod. Uh, let's use back this diagram to explain what does it mean by the QDT is constant. The QDT is constant, you can think of it like this. Let's say I say the heat transfer here is 5 watt. So 5 watt is equal to 5 joule per second. So what it means is uh, at this point here on the rod, uh, 5 joule will pass from the left to the right every second. One second, 5 joule will pass from the left to the right. So I say dq dt is constant means by over here you also see 5 joule being passed from the left to the right for every second. You see 5 joule being passed. Any position, okay, I can draw you any position. You will see 5 joule being passed to the right. 5 joule, 1 second, okay. Even here, even rod Y, also you will see 5 joule being passed per every second. So it means by all along the rod, even the connect, connect, even if it's, it's a series of rod, all along the two rods, you will see dq dt remain constant. How much heat I re how much heat I receive from the left? How much heat I receive from the left? Let's say I receive from the left this much. I'm talking about this part here. I receive this much heat from here. I pass the same amount of heat to the right. I receive how much, I give how much to the right. I receive how much from the left, I give how much to the right. So that means by the dq dt is constant, means by the other side. 
this side as well, it receives how much from the left, it will also pass how much to the right. So everywhere across the rod, the dq dt remain constant. That's why there's no, there's no specific place where the energy is concentrated. Because I receive how much energy, I pass how much energy. So there's no concentrated energy at any specific place. So if the energy is not concentrated at any specific place, your temperature won't change. You don't have gain of energy, you don't have loss of energy. You gain how much from the left, you lose how much to the right. And so the gain and loss cancel each other out. The amount of energy that at that position remains the same. That's why the temperature won't change. Okay, you have to imagine this situation is a bit hard to explain actually. But never mind, uh, next video on question 10, we'll talk a little bit about it as well. Okay, so that's steady state. So with that, let's try to solve the problem. Let me zoom it out a little. So how should we solve the problem? We have to acknowledge that the fact that they say the steady state is always very important. Okay, in chapter 12, always the QTT is not, cannot, the steady state cannot be ignored. So in this case, they say the steady state is constant. Steady state means by dq dt is constant all along the rod. So the dq dt at rod x should be the same as dq dt at rod y. So with that, we can substitute in the formula for dq dt, rate of heat flow, be negative thermal conductivity, cross-sectional area, change, not change, difference in temperature between the two ends of the rod and the length of the rod. Okay, let's just call it Lx then. And then Kx, this one is Kx. So for y, it would be Ky, Ay, the difference in temperature at the two ends of rod y, and the length of y. So now we can try to talk about a little bit of relationship here. We see that Ax is equal to Ay, so we know that Ax is equal to Ay, then they exist on both sides, so we can just cancel it out. Then the negative sign, we can also cancel it out. So what's our next step? Before, before I talk about next step, let's just write down what we have done. So now it's step if k delta Tx over Lx equals to ky delta Ty over Ly. So our next step is, what are we finding? We are finding, look at the left, we are finding kx over ky equals to what? So uh, intuitively, what should we do is, we should bring kx over ky to one side, and we bring everything to the other side. So you have ty over ly, that's one side, and you multiply with something that you brought from the left hand side, so you flip up and down, will be delta t x. Once you reach this point, it's a good time for you to do substitution. So for me, I usually take the convention where I take the cold minus the hot, the colder temperature minus the hotter temperature. So for rod y, I will be taking this one minus this one. So 0 degrees Celsius, then minus by uh, 15 degrees Celsius. But I usually do it in Kelvin. It's a it's a habit of mine to do signs actually in Kelvin. So I'll be taking the colder one, which is 273.15, and I'll minus it with 288 over 15. And close bracket. Then the length of rod y will just be 0 0.30 meter. Then I'll multiply with length of x. Length of x will be 0 0.70 meter. Then the difference in temperature for rod x, the two ends, the colder minus the hotter. So I'll take 15 degrees Celsius minus 100 degrees Celsius. But as usual, I do things in Kelvin. So it's 288 over 15 minus 373.15. So with that said, we can start to calculate everything using our calculator and you end up with an answer which is 7 over 70. The answer is 0 0.41. So if they ask for ratio, you can express it like this. Kx, Ky equals to uh, 7 over 7 
uh, colon 17. Okay, that's how we express ratio. But feel free to leave it like this. That's also correct as well. Okay, so some people here, uh, I finished this question by the way. Okay, so some people here might might see that oh, it looks a bit different from the bottom line answer given for this question. Yes, it's slightly different. Uh, your I think the bottom line answer, it's wrong. They make some algebraic mistake when they do the calculation, so they end up with the answer of one over zero point four one. So incorrect. The answer it should be zero point four one. So that's it for question four. Thank you very much.